An easy midday in the forest, but through the trees stalks a black shark, colloquially known as the werewolf. It creeps towards its prey, a pack of runaway attacks by the watering hole. If you listen closely, you will hear the dead link mating call. There it is. This majestic song can be heard by another werewolf just over the ridge. Today, they will hunt together. It's high noon where their eyesight can single out the most threatening prey in the valley below. Again, with its terrifying deadling howl, the wolf communicates its intent to the other hunter. As one, the wolves pounce in perfect coordination. In a matter of seconds, it's over. To have a working deadling system, Essentially this Purity Z panel, all you need is power from at least one generator, the KO41, and then this DL switch on in the up position, and the Who Am I knob set to anything but off. You can save, recall, and clear data link targets. If those switches are off or not working, then no buttons light up when pressed. For the data link to send receive data link targets and see where your wingmen are on the Abris map, you need a few more things working. The radio power switches for VHF2, DL and VHF TLK need to be on. Note SATLF switch, it does nothing in the sim and you never have to use it, on or off. The Who Am I knob has a receive only mode intended for high security situations where there is concern you may be giving away your position to the enemy with those transmissions. DCS doesn't have that at the moment, but it's there if you wanted to roleplay. This mode won't let you send targets, so to fully communicate with other sharks, best to have this knob on wingman or commander. Now, ignore what it says in the manual. The only difference between wingman and commander is that in the Abris, sharks set to commander appear as having a double circle around them with their chosen ID number, while wingman only have one circle. Now, as long as you have a working day link with another shark and they don't have the same ID number as you, you'll see them on the Abris as a circle or double circle with their ID number on it. If you're trying to locate them by putting your Schwal's line of sight line on them, they'll be in the middle of that circle at the same altitude. I've tested this beyond 111 nautical miles, so it's got ample range in DCS right now for what you need. You can break line of sight a little with hilltops, but if you're massively obscured from other shocks, you'll lose radio contact and thus also lose your daylink. When you lose radio contact, one or more daylink systems aren't working, or a shock has been shot down, this line coming from the wingman circle indicating the current facing will disappear. As soon as you re-establish contact, the circle will disappear and reappear at the new position with the heading line. So if you see a circle without a heading line staying still for a while, use the RA28 VHF1 radio to confirm your body is still alive and if they don't respond and you've headed over there, you can use that circle as a last known position to radio in search and rescue if you believe you should have re-established comms and or you see their wreck. Note, if you scale your abris out further than 1 to 25 k's, then your wingman icons will also disappear. The date link works off the R800 VHF2 radio, so you need to be on the same radio frequency for this radio. Remember changing the R800 radio, you just need to change these rotaries and switch the MFM. But for the R828, running the preset frequencies from the mission editor, you need to change the channel and then press the tune button until the tune light goes out. If you're using SRS, you can confirm the new frequency in the SRS overlay. This emergency switch over here is intended for what's essentially like a godlike channel, but on 121.5 AM for the Russian side. But this mode is not supposed to be able to transmit, only receive, and of course you could always just separate the R800 frequencies between shark flights by one digit up or down on one of these rotaries, so you don't need that. Regarding the circle of your wingman in the Abris, the heading line is the facing of the wingman's airframe, not their schwal. So if you use it to radio to say something's off the wingman's 10, 
but you don't won't know whether they're currently looking at that or dead ahead or elsewhere. Also, since that lion's they're heading, they may be facing that way, but flying backwards or in a side slip. And if they're turning, you'll find it takes a second or two for your Abris to update that information. You can use this in conjunction with the yellow line of your fallen Abris to cross-reference where you're looking versus their facing to confirm they might be looking in the same vicinity at least, given your Schwal's only got a 30 to 35 degree arc left and right. Your ID number on this knob is the number that displays on your wingman's abris inside your circle. And that number will flash on the PROTZ when they receive targets from you. If you share or conflict ID numbers with another shark on your working day link frequency, then you will not see them on your abris. Though you can send and receive targets from them using either your ID number or DL to all. If other sharks conflict in other numbers, you'll see the Abris flicker between the conflicting IDs that you're receiving and the different positions. I suspect you can have as many black sharks on the same dialing frequency as you want. All that happens is your Abris becomes a disco as duplicate ID numbers of other sharks blink off and on between the conflicting positions. You can, however, still send and receive dialing targets from any of those sharks, even sending contacts from your own ID number. Outside of causing epilepsy, this will get confusing and spam with messages or worse, watch ecrans. If you're playing on a join whenever open multiplayer server, I recommend setting your ID number to the slot position. However, there's always someone that doesn't change the ID, so maybe just not have it on one at least. In terms of damage, having a radio knocked out won't give you any warning lights or turns. Though, of course, people won't respond to you or hear you on that specific radio. SRS overlay will show you that your radio frequency is now zeros. Or your wingman might notice that there's less people on that frequency that there should be. Dialing targets will still work for you, but of course you can't send or receive them from wingman and to wingman, and their icons of their positions will freeze on the Abris. If your Abris blacks out, you can still save and use datelink targets, also sending them, but of course you just can't see which datelink target you've selected or where your wingmen are. Losing your tail will knock out your R800 radio, losing your datelink with other sharks, but it seems losing this Garmin antenna doesn't disrupt your Abris. Now, if your Abris got too cluttered with deceased wingmen and dialing targets you don't want to delete one by one, then either switching the Who Am I knob to off momentarily, or the fast way, switching the DL toggle to off and then on again will clear any dialing targets as well as wingmen circles that may be lingering around. This can be useful especially after clearing a target site, as you have less dialing target types to cycle through now. If both your generators go offline, your PRTZ will go dead, even if you have the batteries on. This means losing your daylink targets. No daylink comms with other sharks, or seeing where they are, and no saving targets. And your Abris main page settings, charts, you can disable tactical situation, which hides the Abris threat circles of blue hostiles and friendly reds, but this also hides daylink targets and wingmen from the display. There's no way to wipe or delete PVI 800 points. I've tried switching off nav, batteries, generators, INU, KO41, nothing works. You can only overwrite what's already been created or create new studio points. Respawning will update your Abris with new tactical threat circles, but it should come as no surprise that respawning also clears your dialing targets. So if you have a suspicion you're about to be shot down, consider sending that dialing target to the other sharks, so they can return it to you once you respawn. It saves a target point only when you uncage to get the coordinates, or a dialing target once you press send mem, rather than whenever you locked it. So if you turn away from the target and the schwal reaches its uh, gimbal limits and starts slipping, then it won't be saved in the location you wanted but it'll be saving wherever the Schwal's drifted to at that point at that current range. 
To do this, I recommend you binding more of your commands rather than leaving a hotas to look up and fill around with a drifting mouse cursor. Ideally, you'd have your own simpet or button box customized to match the shark, but for those of us uh, regular folk, there's the keyboard. If you're not using VR, it's generally in reach and giving you a mechanical satisfaction of pushing a physical button. I've mapped my Piro TZ panel to the keyboard numbers 1 to 5, more or less. I've got a 1 to 4 being the target types, then left shift 1 to 5 is the second row buttons, including DL to all, and then control uh, 1 to 4 being the last row of buttons. Well, at least not the first clear one. This way, I can lock the target with my hotas, then reach over with my left hand as you'd reach up in the cockpit, press Shift-5, DL to all, then Control-4 to send mem, and quick share my current laser target with wingman. Or if I receive the target, I want to slew to, I'm just pressing Control-3 for DL ingress, and then pressing on cage on my hotas. My PV-800 numbers are mapped to my numpad, with some of the other buttons like waypoint airfield, target point enter, mapped to the other buttons around the numpad. I use a modify button on my hotas to get all the commands in, so my ABS uh, function select keys or FSKs and the rotary knob is mapped to the numpad while I'm holding the modify button on my throttle. Thematically, this does also mean take my hand off the cyclic, the right hand, to a similar position for the PVI and ABRIS. Unfortunately, there is no access command for the ABRIS's selection knob at the moment, as using a rotary knob with that would be really cool. The mouse can be useful for the rotary though, as it can go a bit faster than your keyboard command, and also be intuitive as it's going in the same directions as you would be moving the cursor. If you're on Cajun target, out of the schwal limits, but your HMS is still yellow and visible, then it'll aim pretty much on spot of that target. But if you're moving then, there won't be initial stabilization, so it'll drift in the direction of your flight. So if you happen to note a SAM launch off your 9 o'clock, you could use the HMS to uncage on the origin of the smoke, come to a halt, then turning towards it, and then slew to the left given the drift that would have happened in the meantime since you slowed down and stopped. And that's it for this section on Daylink and Abris tips. This is Volk, join me in the next vid on how you can get off the grid and then back on it. Cheers. Watch a ground.